This game came out a few weeks ago and it's been all the buzz. My boyfriend approached me wanting to play it for date night and I just couldn't turn him down. As soon as I saw the little characters, I knew I was gonna love it. Choose four. Oh, you're gonna love this game. Oh my goodness! I don't know why it took a sacrificial lamb for me to figure out all I wanted was to be worshipped by a bunch of adorable farm animals, but I'm glad I found my way. Besides, what's more romantic than starting a cult together? This is the game of just one more. He'll be like, just one more crusade before bed. But then we get back and have to give a sermon. The place is a mess, so we need to clean up. Oh, and by the way, everyone's hungry. So how about a feast? Well, we need more bones, so back on another crusade. You know you're having fun with a game when without even realizing it, four hours goes by. I figured out pretty quick that we should wait to play until after dinner, because otherwise we're crawling into bed at the end of the evening, hungrier than our little followers. What the hell's his problem? He needs food! Which is to say, keeping everyone fed and happy isn't easy when you can't bring yourself to kill any of them. Aside from being a good source of meat, there would also be less mouths to feed. It wasn't all that hard keeping the hunger meter topped off in the beginning, when we only had a handful, but now things are getting a little out of hand. It also doesn't help that they're requesting to eat weird shit, sometimes literally, and then they go and get sick from it. Made from a follower? What? Uh -huh. Minced follower meat. Oh my god, I thought he wanted someone to make him something. <laughs> we take turns naming the new recruits. That's how you end up with followers named Kimchi and Chris P. Bacon being in the same cult. I spend way too much time coming up with a perfect name before last minute deciding to switch which animal they're going to be and having to start the whole process over again. If a follower doesn't get a custom name, then it's safe to say he's next in line for the chopping block because more than likely the sacrificial ritual just came off cooldown. Okay, get in. I used to be overprotective of all our little followers. My boyfriend kept accusing me of helicopter culting, but can you blame me? They're just so cute. <gasps> the first time we unlocked the ability to sacrifice them, I made him promise me we would never do that to the little guys. We don't have to do it, but we do have to unlock I want to sacrifice my followers. That was right up until I learned that they were just gonna die of old age eventually anyways. Nowadays, I get disappointed when they drop dead before we can give them the send off they deserve and crack them open for their delicious XP. Dearly beloved, <laughs> we're gathered here to send off a true believer. He was a loyal follower. He was our first. That makes it sound like he took our virginity. <laughs> Love is a battlefield, and in Cult of the Lamb, it takes the shape of base building versus dungeon crawling. With the controller's in my hands, I think we only leave the main base to go collect flower petals. Meanwhile, he's the only reason we're getting anywhere in the main story. It takes a good balance between both worlds to be successful, and in a way, that makes us the perfect team. We can make a difference here. I will make a difference here. You alone? I thought together. Oh, we please, were... don't be naive. But you can be in charge of the women. A good leader knows how to delegate. Let me explain the pecking order around here. He's in charge of going out on crusades to progress the story and recruit new members. The followers are in charge of gathering resources and praying to us back at home. My job is to give them gifts and inspire them to do a good job. So basically play the game like it's Animal Crossing. Taking care of your cult begins with doing some of your daily chores like collecting tithes, blessing your believers, and giving sermons. As bad as I am about staying on top of things in real life, this is the kind of game that I thrive in. In a way, taking care of the flock feels similar to running a daycare center. It starts out easy enough as giving the followers anything to do is a simple enough way to keep them entertained. But next thing you know, they're hungry, one's trying to eat the other, and you're constantly cleaning up after them. Is my generalization a joke to you? The similarities to preschool don't stop there. Funnily enough, when one starts acting up, I like to throw them in time out alone in the corner to think about what they did. All they need is a little bit of re-education before they can join the rest of the class. And if things are taking too long, we've always got a backup plan. Wait, I thought you were gonna kill a dissenter. Shit. When we put him in charge, he tends to disappear to get milk for 10 years at a time, and the place looks unrecognizable when we finally make it back home. The entire flock sets itself on fire when we leave him alone for five minutes. I'm always the unofficial cult mom asking him to go and check up on him. But alas, my warnings are never taken seriously enough, and he'll go fishing for half an hour only to come back to the whole place going to shit. Did that just say Coco Jumbo died? No! <laughs> 
All that said, the Crusades are the other side of the Colt coin, and without them, I wouldn't have our materials to build out our main base. Crusading is best left in his hand, as each time you die, your followers lose a little faith in you. He's my ace in the hole, because without him, all these little guys wouldn't give me the time of day. It's a little ironic considering they're technically worshipping a false leader, as I just host the sermons and get all the love and devotion, while he's out doing the actual work. But what they don't know can't hurt him. Would I rather be feared or loved? Easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. When you're out on a crusade, you always get a spell and a weapon, but they get chosen for you. Obviously, we have some we like more than others, but all of them are fun to use. I will say that if he gets handed a sword, then it's pretty much over before it even gets started. I can fight! Each time you kill a minor boss, you can recruit them to your cult as a new follower. On paper, this is a pretty sweet deal, but because he's gotten so good at taking them out, we end up with way more followers than I know what to do with. There aren't enough beds for all these people, and I don't even have enough food to keep the ones we already have full. Luckily, all those new followers make a pretty decent food source. Woo! Dinner! <laughs> when you're out exploring in the wild, you'll sometimes come across tarot cards. Whenever this happens, I usually read them both and think, yeah, that one looks pretty good. Before where he immediately picks the other one without a second thought. If anything, this just tells me we're lucky that I don't have control during the dungeon crawling. The real reason I prefer letting him clear the crusades is the boss fights. Aside from having to redo all the floors if you blow it at the end, there's just a lot happening on the screen at once. Not only is the boss doing a bunch of crazy stuff, but they're summoning monsters left and right. He'll dodge out of the way, but I think he gets hit. But then he doesn't and I celebrate, but that makes him get hit anyways. And then next thing you know, one hit turns into two, and then we're both sad. Oh, no. No! I get so wrapped up in the mechanisms of the game that I go stretches of time completely forgetting that there's an actual story playing out here. Like, we'll just be running through a forest and suddenly one of these bishops pops up just to fuck with our cult and remind us that they're still waiting for us to fight them. No! No! Coco Jumbo! Coco Jumbo! I've been really impressed with how much there is to do. Just when I think I've seen it all, another feature or mini game gets pulled out of a hat. Normally I find this amount of tutorial menus overwhelming and start to shut down, but they feed it to us at a steady enough pace that I never once felt stuck. When you're not building up the base or engaging in a crusade, you can distract yourself with other fun activities like side quests, fishing, or Gwent. Up for a few rounds of Gwent? My boyfriend loves playing the Knucklebones mini game. I'd say I love watching it more than playing, but I'm still not entirely sure what the rules are exactly. All I know is every now and again he rolls the dice and yells nice right before making a bunch of dice disappear. It's fun getting excited with a dice match even if I don't know why that's good. Oh! <laughs> that was so good! Look at the score! There are plenty of decisions to make about how to lead your cult, and it gives me anxiety. All the different skill trees and choices are my boyfriend's dream and my nightmare. It all culminates in me getting some severe analysis paralysis. I'm always so nervous I'm gonna break something by putting points into the wrong node, but that's why I love playing with my boyfriend. At the end of the day, he's more than happy to allocate all the points for the two of us. For the most part, he's just as new to this game as I am, but at least this way, when things go wrong, I can be like, don't look at me, dude. I've just been planning very bushes. Ow!